Yes, Linux is growing, and Canonical, the creators of Ubuntu, are helping it. First off, let's talk about the growth that's happened over the years for Linux, and then we'll get into some of the financials, including the growth of Canonical over the past year, as they've seen tremendous success. Linux is on the rise, and Ubuntu, which is backed by Canonical, is helping this growth. Here's how things have looked over the years. This is according to the website StatCounter. Right now, we're on Gaming on Linux, and we can see in July of 2023, we had about 3.12% of desktop users using Linux, and here in July, we have around 4.45. It's a significant jump of over 1% over the last year or so. And now let's see what a graphical representation of that looks like here. We can see all the way back to 2009, where things were pretty stagnant for quite a while. As we can see here, we pretty much remained stagnant through this period, and we saw pretty great growth over the years as Linux grew. But we really stagnated again over the 2015 to 2009 period period of around five years, and then we took a sharp growth curve between 2019 and 2024. Again, another five-year period. Will Linux continue to grow at this unprecedented rate? Well, we'll talk about that, but let's move on to some more stats, also provided through gaming on Linux. It shows us what Linux distributions are being used, and it tells us around percentage of users. Now, this was a questionnaire. We can check out a better survey for this in a moment, but according to the survey, Arch-based Linux distributions are the most common, where a whopping 37% or so of people are using it, and then Ubuntu-based comes in second. Now, this is fine for maybe the desktop space. Now, it would be silly to only focus on desktop and gaming on Linux, because that's not actually where Linux shines. Instead, it's a behemoth in the enterprise and server space, and Canonical will show that off here in a moment. But let's continue on the survey as we see the Linux distributions split, including Arch Linux, Fedora, and Ubuntu coming in third here. Desktop environment, KD Plasma is actually taking the cake here on this survey. I don't think this is a great representation of the overall Linux community and what they use, but it is for the ones that answered this survey. There's around 2,600 people who answered this, including a whopping 74% not even dual booting in this particular survey. More people using AMD in the CPU and the GPU, which is quite surprising as we know NVIDIA really dominates that sphere. Anyways, Continuing on, let's look at the Steam hardware survey result for July 2024. We're going to check out Linux only. I'll put a link in the description below so you can check this out for yourself as well. But anyways, you hit this drop down, you can hit Linux only. Here's where I see the various different information on Linux users, specifically in the gaming space and using Steam. If we dig a little deeper into the Linux version, we'll see that there is Steam OS, which is another Linux based distribution that's designed primarily for gaming by Valve, and I believe is based on Debian. Either Either way, it takes the majority of the cake in comparison to the rest, and that's because a lot of people game on this type of platform, but that's no surprise. What is a surprise is behind Arch Linux, which dominates 8% of the space, we got to add up Ubuntu-based distributions down here. Just the core Ubuntu has nearly 3, 7, over 10, 10.5% 10 of this cake. Now, there's many more distributions based on Ubuntu on here, but we're not going to get into that. Instead, we want to talk about some of the hype. Yes, AI. Almost every video is now mentioning AI in some fashion or form, but some of the most popular AI frameworks are really helping Linux out. And we're going to see that here in the Canonical Group Limited filing. And for those of you who are not aware, Canonical, the company, is a privately held computer software company based in London, England. It was founded by a South African entrepreneur here, Mark Shuttleworth. And what it does is market commercial support and related services for its Ubuntu distribution and employs staff in more than 70 countries. Canonical over the years has become a behemoth in the Linux space. And with the growth of AI and incessant need for data servers, it is important for Linux to feed AI and potentially grow Linux to be even a larger portion of the pie, especially in the enterprise space. So this is big for Canonical because they are in fact growing their business. Right now, Canonical stands with more than 1,200 employees. The head office is in London, and we're going to go over to the filing. So what does this filing tell us? Well, it tells us a lot because it shows us how a big company in the Linux space is growing. Because if Linux is growing, so are they because they need to support more Linux enterprise and server solutions. And a few areas where we see growth is in the AI frameworks division. A lot of AI frameworks, whether you know it or not, some of the most popular ones like TensorFlow, PyTorch, and Keras are primarily developed for Linux and are actually optimized. While this might be a surprise to you, the development tools are unprecedented on Linux. It 
definitely offers a rich set of development tools, including compilers, debuggers, libraries, and it's very streamlined because of the package management solution that Linux brings. And there's really no other type of kernel that is so optimized by developers for developers. So in order to compete in the AI space and keep growing, well, it is of the best interest of Linux to compete in this space and completely dominate as it has in the server and enterprise spaces. Because of its free and open source philosophy, it seems that Canonical is gearing up to compete in this space because its growth has been incredible over the past few years and quite a massive jump in the last year. Here we have the annual report and financial statements. I'll put a link in the description below so you can check it out. The year ended December 31st, 2023. And the overall community sentiment on this report here is, of course, mixed. But the broader community has a clear desire to watch Linux dominate in this space as well. What we're interested here is the actual strategic report, which we're going to get into, which highlights Canonical's financial health. And we can appreciate Canonical's financial stability and recognize Ubuntu as a solid user-friendly distribution that is an enterprise-ready and hopefully continued investment in research and development. Now, of course, it'd be nice to have better communication and transparency from Canonical regarding their contributions and strategies but the use cases here for enterprise adoption are wide. Let's first get into the actual breakdown of the strategic report first before we talk about some of those ideas. Anyways, the review of development performance and position of the business performance. As the Canonical Group Limited carries out services on behalf of the Canonical Group, this commentary reflects that of the combined group headed by Canonical Holdings Limited, the CHL Group, in the year to the 31st of December 2023, revenue increased by a whopping $46 million to a total of $251 million. The CHL group continued to invest in human resources with an average headcount moving from 858 to 1,034 compared to the previous fiscal year. Growth in revenue was primarily invested in in sales and marketing and research and developed. Operating profit was 45 million in comparison to 44 in 2022, which if we step back for a second is remarkable. Not only did they grow their staff by nearly 20%, but they were able to profit even more between the years, upwards of 1 million. That's a significant jump when you take all other things into consideration, especially upping the staff by about 20%. Now we get a complete breakdown of their key performance indicators that's what KPI stands for here on the left. We get things like revenue, gross margin, sales and marketing expenses, research and development expenses, general and administrative expense, cash flows and operating activities, average head count. And those numbers are broken down here on the left. The overall performance is quite amazing here for Canonical and Ubuntu because we can see clearly that things are working out for this Linux-based company. Some things that I can think of that are really helping out here is Linux is just wildly used in cloud environments. Ubuntu specifically, as it is adopted in probably the most popular operating system in public clouds like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud Platform, it's really easy to develop on, and I can see a lot of people deploying this in the cloud. I do myself for most of my projects, and Ubuntu Server is a great pick for enterprises of all sorts of sizes. Great for any type of server application, including web, database, file. And finally, there's a strong support for container technologies, including Docker and Kubernetes. Canonical has focused over the years on making a lightweight distro for Kubernetes and continues to improve that enterprise software. Overall, in comparison to like Red Hat and the likes, their enterprise solution is actually more cost effective as well, from what I understand, allowing people to comply with security and get operational support tailored to their needs. But who cares about that? The fact that Canonical has been able to focus heavily on research, development, and containerization, it seems like they have a commitment to open source and Linux to push it out to the masses. I can see them becoming the cornerstone of enterprise in the server landscape. The flexibility here, the security, the cost effectiveness is all attractive to enterprises looking to leverage open source technology, and we're going to need that in the AI space. Where gaming hasn't quite caught up on Linux, the enterprise and server spaces definitely have and have been there for quite a while. The cost effectiveness, the stability, reliability, security, performance, and much, much more make an amazing case for using Linux at the enterprise level. And we're only going to see more of it as AI starts being developed for smaller systems. And as we've seen here, Ubuntu's growth and Canonical's growth is a testament to the versatility of Linux in the technology landscape. It looks like Canonical is dedicated to improving Ubuntu because it's growing itself 
itself. Hopefully, the server environments and AI will play a pivotal role in growing Linux even further. We'll keep an eye on it. And if you want to as well, make sure to subscribe below. Don't forget to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.